Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. The X-Wing line of fighters is the most iconic starfighter used by the Rebel Alliance and its successor government, the New Republic. The Incom Corporation's produced starfighter has been heralded as one of the most complete and well-rounded multi-purpose fighters in the galaxy. Well, at least on paper, because we all know there are no perfect ships, no perfect designs, and there definitely aren't any invincible starfighters out there. So today we'll be taking a look at 10 major weaknesses that the X-Wing has. This is for all of you Imperial pilots out there struggling to shoot one down. Now, if you're going up an X-Wing, you'll have to understand its strengths first before understanding its weaknesses. Most likely, unless you're one of the lucky individuals selected to fly a TIE Defender or some other advanced or experimental fighter, you're going to have to go up against an X-Wing in a relatively fragile TIE in space superiority fighter. Now, the X-Wing is going to beat you in a straight-up head-to-head jousting sort of attack run. Definitely don't try this. I mean, you have a giant transparent steel window in the front of your ship. I know engineers say it's almost as tough as Durasteel, but transparent steel is translucent, so I don't buy it. On top of that, the X-Wing has four S-foil mounted lasers versus your two lasers, so there's going to be a firepower advantage coming from the X-Wing on top of its shields and armor. So in order to win here, you have to use your TIE Fighter's superior maneuverability to approach the X-Wing from a safer angle, ideally from the bottom or the back where the pilot has significant blind spots and is unable to see what's going on. This is important because the majority of starfighter combat in Star Wars occurs at line of sight range because you're using unguided laser weapons. Pilots are still going to need to keep their heads on a swivel, and if they're flying around in an X-Wing cockpit in VR, I found out exactly where the blind spots are. Although, I have to say that the TIE Fighter's blind spots are significantly worse. Now, the T-65B has S-foils for a reason, it's not just for aesthetics. This is a potent craft with four thrusters, four blasters, shields, hyperdrive, life support, an astromech socket, and a wide array of flight aids and sensors. Which is great, but this means that this ship requires a very robust and complicated power system. And oftentimes in the middle of a battle, power management can become an issue, and a lot of these X-Wing pilots will be pushing their power systems to redline. The pilot and droid inside of an X-Wing must constantly balance the various systems of the ship. A capable droid like R2-D2 is even able to predict which systems will need the most power by studying what a pilot is doing. But because of all of this power usage, you're going to have moments where an X-Wing will not be able to devote all of its energy to its thrusters, therefore making it far less maneuverable. A wily TIE fighter pilot can look at the engine plume on an X-Wing and sort of judge what the pilot is doing and where they are redirecting all of their energy. Losing kinetic energy in a dogfight is a really bad thing because it presents a slower target and an easier target for your enemy to hit. So at these moments, a veteran TIE fighter pilot will strike and take advantage of the X-Wing when it's not moving at optimal speed. The TIE fighter with its large solar banks and relatively simple internal systems does not suffer from power lag issues and will outperform the X-Wing in these situations. One of the best ways to expose an X-Wing's power system is just to continue following it around very closely. A veteran TIE fighter pilot will use the superior maneuverability of the TIE fighter to force an inexperienced rebel pilot to push their power system into the red, at which point you'll have an easy target floating right in front of you to destroy. Now, the X-Wing relies on shields to give their more inexperienced pilots a bit more breathing room during a dogfight. But the X-Wing's Chem Pat Defender shields weren't really designed to take more than a few glancing blows. You have to keep in mind, when going up against an X-Wing, most likely when you cycle your weapon, it will require two or if not three shots to take down the shield before your third or fourth shot actually hits the hull of the ship. There was a method used ironically by New Republic X-Wing pilots and legends to overcome the defenses on using bong ships. They basically reconfigured the weapon systems on board to fire in a burst mode in order to overcome the defenses on the enemy fighters. A TIE fighter pilot can use a similar method to assure that their burst fire will take out an X-Wing shields with the first few laser bolts and then also cause damage to the hull with its last few bolts. You can even decrease the energy of the first two laser shots so that it's not wasted on the shield and then increase the power of the third or fourth shot in your burst so that it can destroy the hull of the X-Wing.
The X-Wing platform generally had really good sensors compared to your standard TIE fighter. And the Rebel pilots used this to their advantage greatly, to the point where they almost became reliant on it. Anything predictable about your enemy, even if it is a huge advantage for them, can be used as a weapon against them. Generally speaking, Rebel pilots place a much higher value on their own lives and will only engage TIE fighters in favorable matchups. This means when they have a numerical advantage, or at least an advantage in firepower. This over-reliance on sensors by rebel pilots means that you can trick them into engagements if you're able to hide your true numbers from their sensors. One way to trick an X-Wing sensor is about your true numbers is to fly closely in a very small pack, and then at the last moment, once the X-Wing comes into visual range, you scatter and reveal your numerical superiority. Also, TIE Fighters already have very few electronic signatures because of their efficient ion engines and lack of shields, hyperdrives, heavy weapons, and even life support. You can also just turn your TIE Fighter off and rely on your vacuum suit to keep you alive, and when you see an X-Wing come within visual range again, turn on your TIE Fighter and ambush them. The X-Wing generally is not accompanied by any larger Rebel ships, which will have better sensors for detecting your true numbers. While some ships have a more secure location to store their astromech in, one of the major flaws of the T-65B X-Wing is that the astromech is located on the top of the ship in a relatively exposed position. If an enemy is able to destroy that socket, which is relatively easy to do, the pilot will no longer be able to plot hyperspace jumps, which makes it impossible for the Rebels to carry out their usual hit-and-run tactics. Also, energy management between the various systems becomes a nightmare without an astromech to help you. So, you know, that significantly will decrease the performance of the X-Wing as well. Now, the T-65B is considered well-rounded, but it actually lacks a robust amount of countermeasures on board to prevent proton missiles or concussion missiles from striking it. Sure, it does have the Beach React Screamer sensor jammer that prevents weapons from locking on, but this was far from a perfect defense and could easily be overwhelmed. If you are on an Imperial ship with concussion missiles and proton torpedoes, I recommend you using this before you get into you know, close range knife fights with an X-Wing. At the least, if your projectile misses, it will still force the X-Wing into evasive maneuvers, allowing you to gain proper positioning, as I was talking about before. Our next weakness has little to do with the X-Wing and a lot to do with how poor the Rebel pilot training program is. Because the Rebel Alliance lacks a true recruitment pipeline, you're going to see a lot of bush pilots, commercial pilots, and other novices with little to none fighter experience. This means basic dogfighting theory and maneuvers will not be taught to some of these young pilots. Because of the Rebel Alliance Starfighter Corps' high turnover rate, you're going to see a lot of noobs on the battlefield engaging in their first uh, dogfight as well. Oftentimes, these noobs will be paired with more veteran members of the squadron. One should always focus on targeting these weaker individuals, or at least isolating them from the group so that they can easily be destroyed. We sort of already mentioned this before, but the X-Wing was nowhere near as maneuverable as the TIE Fighter, which means in a close dogfight, the turning game becomes incredibly important. With its smaller turning arc, the TIE Fighter could literally fly circles around the X-Wing and keep it uncomfortable during a dogfight. Only in atmosphere will an X-Wing have an advantage as far as flight characteristics go over the TIE Fighter. And so everywhere else when engaging an X-Wing, keep it tight and keep it really close. Instead of carrying weapons in external hardpoints, the X-Wing places its proton torpedoes directly beneath the seat of the pilot. These were highly volatile explosives capable of doing massive amounts of damage, far more than your conventional explosives. But a few shots penetrating the relatively unprotected bottom of the ship where the proton torpedo rack lay could cause the X-Wing to turn into a miniature star. The T-65B X-Wing has military-grade titanium plates placed all over the fuselage in strategic locations, but this is a pretty spread-out ship. The X-Wing design attempts to mitigate overheating issues by opening up a pair of S-foils with wingtip laser cannons. These S-foils greatly increase the surface area of the Starship, making it more vulnerable to shrapnel-type weapons and general explosions. As we see during the assault on the Death Star, Red 6's ship was clipped by debris from one of the shield deflector towers, which damaged an S-foil and power coupling. This led to the pilot's ultimate demise. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.